Contending for the faith. Yeah. Hard. Yeah. Difficult. Uh, to contend is to fight. Uh, he's, he's calling to mind uh, wrestlers. You know, when you're wrestling with somebody, I don't wrestle, that, that messed my hair up. <laughs> <laughs> And I lose, because they'll <laughs> grab my hair. You know, <laughs> girls used to do that in, in the world. But anyway, um, when you're wrestling with somebody, you're, you're, it's strategic, one. You're looking at their body posture. You're looking at uh, their arms and their legs and seeing what, where they're going to go. Uh, you're holding tight. You're gripping. It could, it could be a, 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 a task of endurance sometimes. Wrestling is not a quick thing to win or to lose. It takes time. It takes mm -hmm. effort. It takes energy. And it might hurt you. Mm -hmm. It might be painful. And so I think when he says to contend for the faith, he's saying, hey, to defend these, God, these doctrines, it's going to take some endurance. Mm -hmm. it's gonna, it, might, it might hurt a little bit. It's going to take a little time for you to be willing to sit down with a friend and say, hey, I know that what you believe feels true. And it seems to line up with your sentiments, but I have to push back against that. Mm -hmm. I, I have to because the glory of God is at stake. I know you might be my sister. I know you might be my friend. I know you might be my pastor. But what I'm seeing in the text is not lining up with what you're preaching. And I'm willing to wrestle with you through this for a long time if I have to, but I have to do it. And so that's, that's ultimately what he's saying is that the faith is worth fighting for. Mm -hmm. Now... We have to, there's a, thank you. <laughs> there's a lot of people who have taken this verse wrong. They have contended for the faith in a way that is ungodly. Uh, we've seen these kinds of people outside of gay pride parades saying that God hates gays. Yeah. Uh, we've met them on university campuses and they talk about Jesus, but they're more hateful than the Pharisees. Right. Wow. And contending for the faith doesn't mean fight people about the faith. Right. We fight for the, for faith, the faith, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think one of the, uh, the challenging things when contending for the faith is that to do it in a way that would honor God, we need the spirit. Mm -hmm. When you think about contending for the faith by the spirit, that means that when I contend from you, for you, I'm kind, I'm joyful, I'm patient, mm -hmm. I have self-control, I'm gentle. Those are fruits of the spirit, Peaceful. right? <laughs> if we saw more Christians contending for the faith like that, mm -hmm. we would see more Christians. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I, I think we have to wrestle within us. Uh, what is it in us that helps us or, or, or keeps us from contending for the faith in that way? Sometimes we're just tired. I'm tired of talking about the same thing. Why won't you just repent? I'm tired of dealing with this. Why won't you just change? But you don't change people with your words. Your words is the means by which the grace of God changes the hearts of a person, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't know God's timeline for the salvation of our friends. We don't know God's timeline for the salvation of our country. We don't know. Sometimes God is preparing a testimony in the people that we are connected to. Mm -hmm. Sometimes God needs them to not be saved for another 10 years because he has something to do when he, when he, when he saves them, you know? Yeah. And so I think wrestling and figuring out what is it in me that keeps me from doing this in a way that would not only be doctrinally sound, mm -hmm. but also integral, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Is there a personal experience with a friend or somebody that you know that you've had to endure a long wrestling season in regard to a subject <laughs> and that, you know, and don't don't make it about your husband right now. So let's not do that. Um, yeah. for the faith better than Love mother. you. Yeah. I got you. Okay. So basically, uh, but is there is is there an example, a category you can help us walk through that um, you know you can you can. You can actually example. talk about I, I, on TV. Yeah, I won't say no names. Yeah. <laughs> we still contending. Um, <laughs> I think there's, there's one person in particular um, where I've learned patience because uh, even now I still have this wrestle with God where it's like, Lord, they've heard the gospel, you know. Uh, I've said it. People have said it. I keep praying. I've been praying more than a decade and I don't see any fruit. You know, I, I know you are not, your arm is not too short to save, but it seems like you're saving everybody but the people that I'm praying mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. um, but part of my contending for them 
is identifying those things that are stumbling blocks to faith, okay? Mm -hmm. So you have some people who uh, may not have grown up in church, and one of the stumbling blocks of faith is the Christians that they've seen in their midst who don't seem to live a certain kind of way, right? And I say it's a stumbling block to faith because to them, hypocrisy proves that Jesus yeah. is actually not powerful enough to change the person, mm -hmm. right? Why would I believe somebody that hasn't changed you? Yeah. And so part of me <laughs> identifying is actually saying, I get it, you've had some really bad examples of Christians, but you haven't had bad, bad examples of Christ. Mm. When you read the Bible, there is no indictment that you can have on him as a person. And so we don't wanna stand before God and say, God, but your people, but your people. And he'll say, but what about me? Yeah. And so part of my effort in contending is to just talk about Jesus. Let's stop talking about all these other people. Yeah. Let's even stop talking about all these doctrines. Let's talk about the person of God. I think that's part, part of it. Another part. Another wrestle is being willing to answer their questions, no matter how hard it is. And even if I don't know the answer, being humble enough to say, I don't know the answer, <laughs> <laughs> but let's figure it out together. Yeah. I think non-Christians need to see that Christians don't know everything just because they serve a God that does. Mm. You know, They need to see humility in us. And so just discerning and seeing and doing the study that I need to do so that I'll be able to be available for them and serve them in that way. And so contending is very intimate. It's very personal. This isn't just, let me just tell you the truth all the time. It's actually, no, let me walk with you. Let me serve you. Let me love you. And then when conversations need to be had, let's have them. Mm -hmm. So shouting truth across the street <laughs> it's not it. it's is, not it. is exactly I mean, not could, what you're talking about. God could use it. He'll use anything. But that's not how I would have become a Christian. Right. Yeah. You know? Right. Um, but I, I get it. I, I think... Shouting is easier than loving. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Love is a fruit of the spirit, which tells me that I can't do it naturally. Yep. Mm -hmm. I need a supernatural mm -hmm. power mm -hmm. to actually love in the way that God has called me to. And it's actually, it's not only easier to shout, but it makes us feel better about ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's some type of Feels weird. Better. Yeah, it just, <laughs> it's some type of weird meanie thing yeah. inside of us where we are unwilling to serve people. <laughs> Jesus said, the greatest in the kingdom is servant of all. We have God in the flesh putting on aprons and washing people's feet. Yeah. And he says, if you want to be great, that's how you do it. Mm -hmm. And so that's part of this is how is my knowledge of the scripture and my love for God making me a better servant. Not preacher, but servant, mm -hmm. you know? And I think if we did that more, uh, things would be easier. Mm 